good morning and welcome to everyone here in the sanctuary and to those of you that are following us on Facebook. Uh, just several announcements. Um, just a reminder, the adult Sunday school class with Goodyear Heights is uh, meeting every Sunday at 855 to 925 and they would love to see some some fresh faces there. Um, we're collecting ACME receipts that goes through um, Christmas Eve is the last day. We'll, I will give you a reminder, so remember to bring in your ACME receipts. And November 10th, Wednesday, November 10th, not this Wednesday, but the next one, we're going to have our community dinner. It is going to be a turkey dinner, and we are not going to be able to have our usual um, congregational Thanksgiving uh, potluck, but we may not all be able to eat physically in the same room, but we can all share the same meal. So if you would like to join us in, in picking up a meal, picking up for your family meals, friends, maybe neighbors, I encourage you to do that. All I ask that is that you let us know by next Sunday. You can get hold of me or just call the office and tell me how many meals you would like so that we make sure that we uh, cook enough meals. But I would, I'd love to see um, some people just pick it up and then we can, we'll share a meal remotely. So just, I'll remind people next Sunday too, to let us know. And if you need one meal, three meals, five meals, just let us know. Um, as you are able, I would invite you as the sun comes in the window there to stand for the worship. Uh, just a little po uh, point out, this is a responsive reading. And when you uh, get to the point where it says congregation sings, we will be singing those were at the, a mighty fortress. So that just a little reminder there. God is our refuge and strength, a very mighty present help in top trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains should shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. Nations are in an uproar, the kingdoms totter. God speaks and the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. God makes war cease to the end of the earth. God breaks the bow, shatters the spear, and burns the shield with the fire.
Be still and know that the Lord is God. God is exalted among the nations. God is exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. God of Jacob is our refuge. Most holy and gracious God, we give thanks for the gift of the Holy Spirit, whose light brought new understanding of both the living word and the written scripture. We thank you for the instruction that comes through our church heritage, the understanding of the saints, the gift of community, the confessions and creeds, and a deeper appreciation of God's gift of holy baptism and holy communion. God of stability and change, we thank you that true reformation is always your work and always being done in us out of your love for your whole creation. We are ever reformed by the work of your love. Ecclesia reforma, reformata, semper reformanda, the church reformed, always being reformed. O oh God, according to your word and to the call of your spirit. Amen. Amen. We come to the font to remember that the font connects our confession of sin with the grace and cleansing of our baptism and our baptismal call every day to new life in Christ. Let us confess our sin, calling for God's transforming power. Source of all life, we confess that we have not allowed your grace to set us free. We fear that we are not good enough. We hear your word of love freely given to us, yet we expect others to earn it. We turn the church inward rather than moving it outward. Forgive us, stir us, reform us to be a church powered by love, willing to speak for what is right Act for what is just and seek the healing of your whole creation. Let us take this time of silence for personal reflection and confession. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God hears our cries and sends the Spirit to change us and to empower our lives in the world. Our sins are forgiven. God's love is unconditional. And we are raised up as God's people who will always be made new. In Christ, Christ we, we are, are forgiven. forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please turn to your neighbors and uh, show signs of peace and reconciliation for those of you who are at home. Peace be with you. That's true. <laughs>
Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. By the power of your Holy Spirit, make yourself known to us through your word that we might be faithful witnesses and joyful companions in your kingdom. Amen. Our scripture reading is a reading from Hebrews. But when Christ came as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and perfect tent, not made from hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls with the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer sanctifies those who have been defiled so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to worshiping the living God. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark, the 12th chapter. Let us listen for what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other and to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. 
When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, you give us the words of eternal life. So silence now any voice in us but your own. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you. O Lord, our help and our hope. Amen. I remember when I was young, going to big family reunions. It was great. The two things I liked most about it back then were I got to play pretty much all day, kickball, softball, and hide and seek, with all my cousins, some of whom I only saw once or twice a year. And second thing, we always made hand-cranked, homemade ice cream. I love ice cream. Yummy. But what I like most as I look back now on those family reunions was that through the tradition of those reunions, I got to know my extended family. I learned a sense of belonging, of where I came from, of where I fit in, of who I was. We Protestants today celebrate the 504th anniversary of the Reformation. I have my Genevan robe on. Back then, they, only men wore them, but now women get to wear them. 504th anniversary of our Reformation, which in the end separated the one Christian church into two separate and distinct parts, Protestant and Roman Catholic. And much like the tradition of family reunions in our celebration of the Reformation, we as Presbyterians get an idea of where we came from, where we fit in, and who we are in the universal Christian faith family. German professor of theology, priest and monk and composer, um, uh, Martin Luther, who wrote our hymn today that we already sang, well, the first hymn that we sang, uh, Mighty Fortress is Our God, based on Psalm 46. He wrote the words and the music to that. A mighty fortress is our God. Um, anyway, Martin Luther is credited with having begun the Reformation in 1517 when he posted 95 theses on the door of Castle Church in Wittenberg, Germany. These theses, or criticisms, outline 95 things in the church that he believed really needed to be reformed. Contemporaries with Martin Luther who sought similar reforms in the church included Ulrich Zwingli, Philip Melanchthon, and of course our very own John Calvin. It's important to know that neither Luther nor any of those other leaders were ever trying to actually split or split from the church, but were totally committed to reforming some of the doctrines and the practices of the church at that time. Our Christian faith began with the followers of Christ. But the beginning of our Christian faith as Protestants is in the Reformation with those reformers, like Martin Luther and John Calvin, and their protests, the root of Protestant, in favor of changes or reforms, the root of Reformation. The Reformation marks something significant for us in our part of the universal church. The uniting of our focus on the Holy Spirit's ongoing reforming of us as the church and of us as individuals. Martin Luther helps us to understand and acknowledge that the institution of the church is not equal to God. We're called to worship the triune God alone to claim Jesus Christ as Lord of the church, and to seek ongoing sanctification with the help of the Holy Spirit. And that's why the ancient words, ecclesia, reformata, semper, reformanda, secundum, verbum, dei, the church reformed, 
always being reformed according to the word of God are a rallying cry for Presbyterians. It's a motto that reminds us of who we are and who we intend to be. Our sanctification, God's ongoing process through the work of the Holy Spirit, of our becoming more free from sin, more holy, if you will, is a never-ending gift for how we live together as the church. That's why study of scripture for all people is an ongoing practice in addition to communal worship and the celebration of our sacraments. That's also why we place such a high value on communal discernment in our decision making. And because we have so much to learn, it's why our habits of conversation push us to listen to every single voice God brings into our midst. It's no wonder then that the spirit of the Reformation has drawn so many Reformed congregations into social justice. There's not a, a square inch of this world that doesn't belong to God, that God doesn't love. Presbyterians have also long been marked by a passion for and a commitment to education for just that same reason. Learning how God's world works is an opportunity for praise. Learning about unjust, sinful situations and systems that could be righted and healed is an opportunity for glorifying God by honoring Jesus' commandments to love God and to love neighbor. And so we as Presbyterians take systemic poverty, systemic racism, ageism, sexism, and all the other isms very seriously. While we stumble and err along the way, we truly strive toward the real-life freedom of grace in Christ for all people. What's more, the world God loves is not just for the world of people, but for all that is, for all that God created. Our climate is changing, and though we, we may disagree on why, there are at least two things we know. First, God gave us as human beings stewardship of this earth, which God called good. Second, no matter why the climate is changing, people are suffering from fires and floods, drought and famine, and many other natural disasters in our time. Our call from Jesus himself to care for this earth and to care for those who are suffering, to feed and shelter and clothe and give them water to drink, is our call. According to the word of God, means that we remain open to the work of the Holy Spirit in our whole selves, heart, mind, soul, and strength. We've recognized for centuries that our Christian life is not just study, and it's not just action. These two aspects of who we are work together to constantly deepen each other. The more we practice love for one another, the more we understand what love of neighbor is. And the more we understand what love of neighbor is, the more we can teach others. And the more we know how to learn from others about the love of neighbor. Our response to God's grace for us in Jesus Christ reveals our gratefulness in our words and our deeds. We read in scripture that we can't say we love God while we hate our neighbor. If we're being reformed by God according to the word of God, then we do justice, love mercy, and hum walk humbly with God seeking the well-being of others and the welfare of the world community in which we live. For in its welfare, we find our welfare. How we fulfill Christ's two greatest commandments as we read in our gospel reading today, to love the Lord our God with our, all our heart and soul and mind and strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves, 
Well, that just makes all the difference. So how do we return God's love? We return God's love in worship, where we also receive our triune God's presence within us and among us. We return God's love through the offering of our tithes and our gifts, our time and our talents. For the furthering of Christ's commission to spread the gospel. And we return God's love into the world by actually loving others. All others. Because all are our neighbors, excluding none. I've heard it said that when we pray for God's kingdom to come, we're also praying that we let go of our own. <coughs> That's the real test of how well our Reformed tradition has soaked into us. Because as Presbyterians, we worship the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Not a denomination, or a structure, or a book. And we believe as the Reformers believed. Soli Deo Gloria. To God alone be the glory. A billion voices in one great song, now soft and gentle, now deep and strong, in every culture and style and key, from hill and valley, with sky and sea, with Christ we praise you eternally, soli Deo Gloria. Soli Deo Gloria. In God alone be the glory. On this Reformation Sunday, we can celebrate our faith and feel the joy of our, having our faith move from our heads to our hearts, from our hearts to our lips, and from our hands out into the world. May God's word continue to form and re form us today, tomorrow, and always. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, Mother and Father of us all, for the reformers of the church like Martin Luther and John Calvin. We pray that we too might be a part of a continuously reforming church that is always relevant in its time and place. We rejoice in the free gifts of love and forgiveness you give us. Watch over us as your children and send us out to be faithful disciples among your people today. It is in the name of Jesus, the greatest reformer of all, that we pray. Amen. Now let us stand and say what we believe using the affirmation of faith which is written in your bulletin. This affirmation for Reformation Sunday is composed of excerpts from the creeds, catechisms, and confessions of the Presbyterian Church USA. We believe in one holy and apostolic church. The holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints. This Kirk is Catholic, that is, universal because it contains the chosen of all ages, of all realms, nations, and tongues, be they of the Jews or be they of the Gentiles, who have communion and society with God the Father and with the Son, Christ Jesus, through the sanctification of the Holy Spirit. The church is the assembly of the faithful called or gathered out of the world, a communion of all saints, namely, of those who truly know and rightly worship and serve the true God in Christ the Savior by the word and Holy Spirit, and who by faith are partakers in all the benefits which are freely offered through Christ. The visible church, which is also Catholic for you.
together with their children and in the kingdom of Jesus Christ, the house and the family of God. The visible church has the privilege of being under God's special care and government, of being protected and preserved in all ages, notwithstanding the opposition of all enemies, and of enjoying the communion of saints, the ordinary means of salvation, and offers of grace by Christ to all members of it in the ministry of the gospel, testifying that whosoever believes in him shall be saved, and excluding none that will come unto him. The church's mission, upon which its freedom is founded, consists in delivering the message of the free grace of God to all people in Christ's death, and therefore in the ministry of his own word and ever preserving and sacrament. The church confesses its faith when it bears a present witness to God's grace in Jesus Christ. The life, death, resurrection, and promised coming of Jesus Christ has set the pattern for the church's mission. The church follows this pattern in the form of its life and in the method of its action. So to live and serve is to confess Christ as Lord. With, With believers in every time and place, rejoice.
as disciples of Jesus Christ called to love and serve all people, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Reforming God, renew the covenant you have made with your people. Redeem your church from self-serving sins and write your law in our hearts so that all we say and do proclaim the grace you have shown us. Turn our hearts to people outside our walls and transform our communities into places where all may find redemption and hope. Make this congregation into a place of forgiveness and reconciliation. Empower our faith <clears throat> so that we may witness to the good news of your unconditional love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Reinvigorate those places on earth that have become desolate and barren through human interventions or natural disasters. Breathe new life into plants and animals, into air, land, and waterways. Teach us all to share these gifted resources that no one hungers or thirsts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Reconcile all nations to one another. Give all leaders a spirit of compassionate, humble service and a desire for justice and equality. Where long-standing disputes remain, raise up new generations to foster understanding. Bring peace where there are deep-rooted conflicts and wars. Shatter the fear we have of people different from us and break down all that separates us from you and from one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen those around the world who are persecuted and their lives are threatened because of their faith. Especially today, we pray and continue to pray for the missionaries who were kidnapped in Haiti. Revive those who live under the weight of anxiety, despair, addiction, grief, or illness in mind, body, or spirit. Carry their burdens and um, uplift them by your compassionate spirit. Especially today we pray for those on the prayer list of North Springfield Church and for all those we now name in our hearts, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal word of life, we give you thanks for the reformers of every generation whose faithful and loving service remains a powerful witness for us to follow. Keep us steadfast in your word until we join them around your throne. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, faithful God, and renew us by your spirit that we may joyfully love and serve you and one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread, and forgive us our debts. Our faithful God provides everything that we need. Let us praise the Lord through our giving that our offerings may be acceptable to God.
ever faithful God. We offer no gift but that but which you have first given us. Grant that we may give to others by the same thing which the same chief have received from you, and that through these gifts your kingdom will be further. In Jesus' name. now, knowing that God sends us forth to speak of hope, that Jesus is with us to help us challenge injustice, and that the Spirit strengthens us to seek peace and love for all. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you this day, and every day your whole life long, and the people of God say,